<laughs> Hi, everyone. We are here. We have arrived. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello everybody. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Of course, people will start popping on. Hi, Facebook. Hi, YouTube. Hi, LinkedIn. Um, <laughs> we are here with some of our friends. And if you're catching us live, tell us where you're from. Um, tell us where you're watching from. Of course, today we're celebrating women in business. It is Women's History Month. Yay! <laughs> so the goal today is to bring you some powerful women in business um, and to just tell you a little bit about their journey and um, some of their accomplishments, some of their wins, some of their failures, some things they've overcome. And um, just chat with us. These are some of my good girlfriends and I, um, I'm excited to share them with you today. Awesome. So we'll start. We'll go around the room. We'll let everyone introduce themselves. If you're watching the replay, I forgot. Hashtag replay. Drop it in the comments. And again, let us know where you're from. And if you have a business, tell us about your business. So we'll just do a little round robin. We'll start with introductions. And the, of course, this is Luxury and Legacy. So the first thing we're going to do when you introduce yourself is tell us a little bit about what legacy means to you. Cool. So we'll start with Pam. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Pam Covarrubias. I am a business coach focused on liberation to dismantle the damages of calladita culture in Latinas, which is basically the saying that we grew up hearing of you look prettier when you're quiet. And mm -hmm. with that, I became the business coach I, my mom needed. And I bring in a lot of tools to support women-owned businesses with their work. And what legacy means to me is really leaving the world better than I found it. I'll keep it short. Mm. <laughs> it is a loaded question, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. Pam, you always say you became the business coach that your mom needed. What does that mean? Well, I grew up in a single mother income. And it was a, a single mother business owner income. And I know that if she had had the support that it was – needed then the business would have grown exponentially it would have been you know a lot of mm. mistakes that happened come with lack of support and really not knowing how to ask for help and so now I teach my clients like you you can ask for help and you can rest and you can you know it's totally fine and because I lived it firsthand mm. what it was like to to be and my dog is here the child of <laughs> of an immigrant and a single mother income. Yeah. So you hear that ladies, ladies, first I have a message for ladies and gentlemen that are watching, right? Ladies ask for support. It's okay. It doesn't make us weak. And then for the guys that are watching or non-binary support women in business, right? We need your support. Awesome. All right. Delena. So tell us who you are about your business and what does legacy mean to you? Hello everyone. So my name is Delena Barbie. I am the founder and managing attorney of Barbie Law Boutique. And so at my law firm, the areas that I focus in are business law and estate planning, broadly those areas. And so I help individuals, primarily business owners, with structuring a business that can last for a legacy <laughs> and also to plan for how to protect assets for generational wealth. Um, because it's one thing to accumulate assets. It's another thing to be able to properly protect those assets, whether you're doing it within your business or for yourself individually, and to um, protect them and pass them along to the next generation or to a charitable organization that impacts your community. And so for me, what legacy means is leaving a step up and giving that step up to the next generation, whether that's, again, through an individual in your family or a loved one or through a charitable organization. Awesome. So if you guys have watched this before, you've heard me say that um, building a legacy, it's selfless. I say that, but I also say that um, it's about giving the next generation a leg up. I stole that from Delena. <laughs> <laughs> so, and Delena's amazing. So if you need trademarks, protecting your intellectual property, that's another common thing that women in business do, right? We give away our wisdom for free. And did you know that that can be a business? Like you can make money from your mind, right? So get with Delena for that. Gloria, Gloria is amazing. I won't steal her intro. Gloria, tell the people what you do. And um, what does legacy mean to you? So All the I'm things gonna... you do. I'm going to start with the answer to the question, because then the answer to the question will make more sense when I explain who I am and what I do. Um, so to me, building a legacy is building the foundation 
for the future, right? Mm. Uh, so the foundation of a house, the foundation of any structure, any building, any anything, you know, the bones, building some really strong bones mm. for the next generations, right? So even if they want to come and renovate what I did, what I built, that foundation and those strong bones are still there. Um, mm. So with that, I'll explain. My name is Gloria Marie, uh, and I am the owner and principal of a boutique construction management and real estate development company out of the Northeast. Uh, we help owners basically execute projects from this dream concept idea to putting it down on paper and writing it down, planning it out, figuring it out, uh, working with people like the attorneys and estate planners and realtors and brokers brokers to really build a strong team for this foundation, mm. own the legacy of what they want to build, that story that they have, whether it's their own personal home or whether it's an asset that they are keeping in the family, a portfolio mm. of assets, multifamily, commercial property, business, et cetera, because we do work with a lot of franchises as well. So, and I do this because very similar to Pam, uh, I grew up in a third culture home. Um, I did not grow up with a single mother because my father did work, but my father was an expat and we were very similar to military uh, families in that my father would be gone months at a time. Mm. Uh, you know, sometimes he would leave for literally in the morning, he would fly out to Venezuela and then he would come back home for dinner only to fly back out because he had meetings. Um, and we lived in Aruba and that was that. So, you know, I saw firsthand my mother, uh, raising three kids without mm. asking for any help in a completely foreign country. Uh, and she did have my father's income, uh, so she didn't struggle. And, you know, we're grateful for that. We were gifted so many things through my father's business and everything. But I also saw a family, and I love my family, but that, you know, wanted more for us. And so they were building their strong foundation by making the sacrifices that they made for us here in this country, relocating net then to the United States, which was a whole different thing. My mother didn't speak any Spanish. Uh, she had to deal with the contractors. I mean, I'm sorry, my mother didn't speak any English. <laughs> Contractors. She had to deal with all these different people, right? Um, and my grandmother who owned a business. And, you know, I see women who own businesses. The majority of our clients are women and they get taken advantage of because they don't know what they don't know. So I'm here to be a voice, a voice where women can, you know, feel confident even as a business owner of what they don't know and tell me, mm. hey, Gloria, I, I need to fix these toilets. And these people are telling me X and it's supposed to cost this. And I don't know. And I know you're not going to make fun of me for not knowing what I don't know. Um, so that's what I do. I'm here to be that support for women, for men, for anybody. Uh, but the majority of our clients are women and we are very proud of that. Yay. <laughs> and you know, women, I'm um, Gloria, like another phrase that's synonymous, synonymous with her name is women in construction, right? <laughs> and so she has not mentioned, but she has a platform where she uplifts women in construction. And that's important to her because that's another one of those fields that's dominated by men, right? So she has been able to um, build a community of people and resources and allies that can help uplift women in that industry. And I think that's amazing, Gloria. Well, you know, it was kind of selfish at first. I was doing it for myself. I mean, not selfish. I was literally just looking for other women who were doing what I was doing mm. and who were struggling with what I was struggling. Having come from the real estate and the finance arena, you know, I've been through this before, right, Michelle? Like where yeah. we're one woman in a meeting room uh, of 10, 20, 30 men. Now I'm here on a job site. I am one woman to every hundred men. And even the women don't respect me. Like what? So, um, yeah, I was looking for support for myself, for mentorship, um, and really for guidance from other women who had been doing it longer. Uh, mm. And in return, what ended up happening is that, yes, we did. We ended up building a community to support 
other women and I've found hundreds of women now. I mean, it's incredible. Thousands uh, who follow, support, who share their stories. I mean, it truly is a blessing. I mean, I, I did not seek out to do this, but um, it, it it happened. And I, I'm grateful that God mm -hmm. is using me in the way that he's using me uh, to do the things that I am doing for the industry, for women, uh, and to uplift, you know, uh, construction. It's one of the oldest industries in the world and it yeah. is super cool. And a lot of people just, you know, they don't even know it. <laughs> Yay. All right. I want to do things a little backwards. So we, we often go into what were our successes, right? And of course, people love to hear that. We've just laid some amazing um, wins on people just through our intros, right? But honestly, what really resonates every time we do these are what are some challenges that we've overcome, right? Like what has been one of the biggest hurdles, or maybe you even called it a failure in business that you were able to overcome? And this is round robin, so anyone could jump in and take it. So I'll, I'll be happy to take that one. Mm. I think it probably goes to some of the things we were talking about with the women in our lives taking on a lot mm. and not always asking for help. Um, but sometimes we don't even know how to identify when we need help. So for women in business, like we're doing these things and we have these endeavors and we're so ambitious. But for me, when it came to like having a ton of work and figuring out, well, when do I bring on help? Um, to support my business now, because I feel like, well, I can do it all, but can I really do it all? Or <laughs> is that, you know, is that really what I'm supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. You know, in the role that I have, you're, as the business owner, you're supposed to be the visionary. Most of the time, that's what you, you wanted to do. You have the vision for the business and you want to grow it, but then you get invested in working in the business because now you're in the weeds and you didn't ask for help. So I would say that one of the things that I wish I did sooner was get help sooner and i heard people say it when i was starting but i'm like really do i need that now um and so i like waited and waited and i waited until it was at the point where like i can't not do it anymore so i would say i would have definitely um gotten help earlier and i know if anyone is disregarding that the way that i did do not do it <laughs> even if it's just someone who's helping you for some hours a virtual assistant who's a contractor it doesn't need to be a full-time employee who you're paying a salary and benefits to on day one just get some support to help you in your business because that will be a game changer as you move forward it gives you an opportunity to figure out how you want to grow the business and um and visualize it but then also rest rest is important mm. it is key we need to rest we could talk about business all we want but we have to make sure that we have that component for our bodies as well and to make sure that we are we are well i love that you know, and a lot of women, we feel like it's, oh my gosh, they're going to think I'm weak or I'm emotional if I need rest. No, we need to rest, right? That's, yes, that's the right foot. Sorry. <laughs> right? And it's okay uh, for us to be a mom sometimes too, or an auntie or whatever we need to be and not like freak out about it, right? Yeah, you know, uh, I love yeah. you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I'm going to piggyback or build on what uh, Delania said. And that's, you know, we need to take time to take care of ourselves. I, for example, just finished getting my nails done. Okay. And the reason is, is because it is really, really important for me, uh, even if I'm doing a blue collar job, you know, in a blue collar industry or whatever, to take the time to take care of myself, to take care of my hands, to take care of my body, uh, to put makeup on occasionally, like that's okay. Wash my hair. Yes. <laughs> curly hair, um, you know, and sometimes it's just easier to throw it up in a bun or whatever. But I, I think one of the biggest mistakes that I made early in my career, particularly mm. when I transitioned from corporate banking, working on a trading floor where I worked for Lloyd's Bank and I was dressed to the nines in, mm. you know, Saks Fifth Avenue to coming home with overalls that were full of mud and paint and spackle and boots and stinky and nasty and all the things, right? And then sitting there picking crap out of my nails, right? <laughs> and it's a decision that I made for myself. Uh, but I also had to remind myself that I am still woman. 
Okay. Mm. Responsibilities as woman of the house. Okay. Um, and at the same time, uh, I also need to do things that make me happy. So if putting on bright lipstick makes me happy, if doing my nails makes me happy, if, you know, getting a massage every couple of weeks because it's important makes me happy, going to the gym in the morning, you know, making the time to do the things that I did, even when I worked a white collar job where it's normal versus a blue collar job. Um, and I think that that's probably one of the things that I tout the most on social media, that it's okay for us to be girly and still mm. work in a man's world. I love that. I love that. And I honestly, what I took, like my thoughts are, since I've been in business for myself, I only recently, honestly, through the help of Pam, realized that it's even more important for us to take care of ourselves now than before, right? Because inherently like when you have a day job as I like to call it right or you're working that corporate job you get your hair done right you wear the best clothes your nails are often manicured because it's just a part of grooming but when you work for yourself same when I'm like in these real estate streets it's not like tv you don't have to wear like stilettos to show a house right <laughs> or to meet with a car no you there. don't and realtors <laughs> don't wear crop tops I mean yeah. just saying <laughs> I never did it. Anyway. <laughs> you know, and this is the perfect segue, honestly, to Pam. So Pam <laughs> is our resident, like, get your mind right coach in this place. Right? <laughs> and so, you know, when we had our future of generational wealth um, for, you know, women, Pam started us off that day with um, an exercise that she calls tapping. And I'll let her tell a little bit more about that. But it's really just to ground yourself and prepare for what's next. And it was absolutely amazing. So Pam, what are your thoughts? Just, one, just on, um, you know, this taking care of yourself, loving yourself, um, being beautiful, right? Take care of yourself doesn't mean like a vacation and going out to dinner. It means the little thing. What are your thoughts, Pam? For sure. And I mean, that's something that I... I lean on a lot is the teachings of Mother Earth. And as we know, Mother Earth has seasons. So women cyclically, we are cyclical beings. Men are too, but their cycles are just significantly shorter than women. And the reason why we're often overworked and burnt out is because we are racing with the cycle of men, which mm. is 24 hours or arguably three hours. And women is a month. And so we are, from a biology standpoint, not created to operate at a 24-hour pace. We are created biologically to really rest and to space out. We, we just need more spaciousness. This is why women make decisions and it takes them a little bit longer because we have to really marinate on all of the things. And so rest is one of the most important things that is part of if a woman's body is to really honor that bodily need of taking a nap if you need to or taking five minutes or taking a day off even because mm. there are just periods in your in your in your body cycle that require you to actually rest just like winter time with the earth and so that's as far as rest so as far as EFT tapping it's the other tool that I use. And the reason why I use it in business is because EFT is rooted in three main modalities, traditional Chinese medicine, which we use the nervous system, the, the meridian points in the body, NLP, neurolinguistic programming that allows you to reprogram your, your brain and really kind of shift the way that we think. So it's the mindset piece and energy psychology, which allows us to go deeper into what it is that we believe in. And so with tapping, the main thing that I tell people that tapping does is it regulates your nervous system. And as business owners, we are often with our amygdala at fight or flight mode because we get a notification and the brain doesn't know the difference. So it could be a tiger outside trying to kill us, or it could be a notification in an email. And the amygdala thinks is, is just as <laughs> intense. And mm. as we navigate this business world, then our amygdala is constantly turned on. It's constantly looking for danger because that's our negativity bias. Our brains have evolved to look for the negative. And it's an evolutionary trait that we cannot remove from ourselves. It looks for the negative as protection. And so 
when we use tapping, then we allow the nervous system to get regulated so that we can make better decisions. And so that's one of the many tools. I mean, some people use meditation, some people use breath work, some people use, I don't know, yoga. And so whatever tool of choice it is, it's important to bring it back to the rest. It's important to to make sure that our nervous system is regulated and at a harmonious space so we can make better decisions so our bodies can self-heal, so we can be clear and we can just grow them coins that we want to grow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Pam, so tell us about a challenge or something you've overcome, even a failure. Um, I mean, to, it's very similar to all of the ones that have been shared. But one thing that I did learn from my mom, she told me early mm -hmm. in my career, she was like, when your hourly rate is higher than what it costs to pay for it, you pay for it. And so if my hourly rate is higher than having someone clean my home, then, then whatever they charge for the hour, you pay for it because mm -hmm. you can pay for it. And so that stuck with me for a long time and I fought it like we all did. You know, I was like, no, I can do it. I don't need to spend that money. Like, I know it's possible. And it really, I mean, I have burnt out. So mm -hmm. I, I don't believe in failures. I think lessons, I believe in lessons learned. And one of the things was believing that I could do a lot and overcommitting. And then really being like, what did I, what was I thinking when I said mm. yes to like three things in one day, you know? And so really that created more awareness of my time, of the energy that I'm giving to others, because that's also draining. And so I keep that in the back of my head. If my hourly rate is higher than what it costs to make, then I can hire someone to do it, whatever it is. Awesome. I love that. So tell mommy that good one because she's right. You know, one of the things that I tell most business owners that work with us um, is to hire a cleaning lady. And most women, they feel <laughs> like they have to go to work 10 hours a day, run a business answer their cell phone on conference calls while they're cooking and having dinner and, you know, everything else and also clean and do the laundry. And you know what I mean? So uh, I tell women all the time, hire a cleaning lady. And I tell men, you want to gift something to your wife? You want to gift something to your lady? Hire her a cleaning lady. Hire yes. a <laughs> nanny to come help a couple hours a week. Mm -hmm. Like you have no idea. And, and I don't have children, right? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> but I did see my father and other men in our mm -hmm. family, um, gift that to my mother and other mm -hmm. women and the difference that it made in my mother's life, the difference that it didn't make in my grandmother's life who mm -hmm. ran an entire business, a store, a daycare, basically of all the grandkids. Cause all the parents were young <laughs> and in Hispanic <laughs> families, you just drop off the kids at grandma's house. Yeah. And Black so, family too. you know, <laughs> I saw her do all of these things and also make time and dedicate for her telenovelas, which was very, very, very important. That's sacred you know, time. She rest in peace. <laughs> but she also mm. utilized the time to train us young ladies on how to keep a home, you know? Mm. Uh, so there are some traditional things that I learned during that time that I feel very blessed to have because I think that uh, that's another thing that perhaps is lacking in this new generation and culture, um, you know, and so, but women do need to understand that if they don't have the time, they do not need to burn out. So I say hire a cleaning lady or do the drop off, drop and fold service for your laundry uh, at least once a week, once every other week, once a month, even hiring a cleaning lady to come and do a deep clean once once a month will save your life. So uh, yes. Pam, I could not agree with your mother more and I don't even know her. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you know, the other thing about that is that you have to release the guilt, right? It's like as women, we feel, and I will speak from my own self and watching my grandmother, my grandfather gifted her twice that I ever remember in life with someone to come and clean the home and she scrubbed the house. 
before they arrive. And I know you can relate. I yes. <laughs> You scrub that. We have to help. That's my scrub mom. <laughs> That's my mom. Right. She'll wipe so- all the walls down because she's embarrassed that the house right. was dusty before the cleaning people showed up. <laughs> exactly. And it's so funny because they're the wise ones. So now, like my husband's mother, my mom too now, um, you know, she often says every time I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. The house is a mess. She's like, that means you have a house, a happy home. You know, you have mm. three kids running around, you know. Um, but I, so I would share too. So my biggest, and I'll speak of a recent one, Pam and I talked about this recently as well. Um, you know, I would say one of my biggest, I call it a failure, right? But you know, my grandfather was, had a big thing about failures, right? And I think someone said it earlier, failures are just an opportunity to learn and grow without them. You don't. Right. And so, well, last year I told Pam this last year was like supposed to be my growth year. Right. I was like, I'm going to make all this money. Right. We did well. I'm not complaining. But the truth is I invested a lot of money, right? So the year before um, we did really well, we had, um, you know, broken some records, accomplished some goals, and we're like, you know, this year we're going to do it even bigger. So we decided to invest in a bunch of stuff, right? We're like, we're going to spend money on this ad service and that ad service and all these things. Well, at the end of the year, after all of that, our numbers were about the same, right? We had a great year the year before. We had a great year last year, but it wasn't this like 10x growth that we would have expected from all of this stuff, all the shiny objects that we invested in. And when we went back to the um, the number, I mean, I literally was depressed from like January to like yesterday, right? Because <laughs> of all the money, right? And what it came down to for me was I do investing in yourself. I do believe in investing in your business. I do believe in um, spending money on your business and all of that stuff. But I think that what that taught me was that all it did not take all of that to be successful, right? All of the things that we were doing before, just showing up for my audience like we're doing now, giving back, building true relationships like I am with Pam and Delane and Gloria, those are the things that all those things that we did in 2020 were the things that we should have just kept doing in 2021. So my lesson for everyone is if you're doing something and it's working, Pat yourself on the back because that means you're doing a good job. Keep doing it. You don't need to start doing what everyone else is doing just to feel, just to um, 10x, you know, (laughs) you know, the goal. 10x, 22x, I mean, whatever. (laughs) I also think um, social media and these terms, the 10x that was created by, you know, the Cardones and other things like this put a lot of pressure uh, and social pressure on particularly men, actually, yeah. uh, in my experience, at least maybe it's because I am work, I work and I'm surrounded by more men than women. The ratio is higher. Uh, but I have found that it puts a lot of pressure on men um, to uh, grow and double, triple X. And then women, because we feel like we need to work 10 X, 10 X, 10 X to prove ourselves above the men, then we overdo it. Uh, and so I find, uh, and Michelle, you know, this because I don't have a huge social media following and, you know, I grew, yes, that community on another social audio app and, you know, have been blessed enough to meet people like you and others who uh, now allow me to have platforms to come and speak on some of the things that we do and some of the things that we're passionate about and just the construction industry in general and bring more awareness to it. Uh, However, you know, you're right. Like we don't have to put all that additional pressure on ourselves. And, uh, I find particularly within my network, uh, a lot of men were depressed from like 2020 mm. to 2021 because they weren't seeing the dollar signs that they were used to seeing in the bank accounts. And much like women have shame over a dusty home. Mm. And I know this conversation is not about men, uh, but I think it's important. It's, I think it's so important for us to like address this, right. Uh, you know, a lot of men lost a lot of confidence and uh, mm. stress 
in themselves too. So I think as women and as women business owners, uh, as women who are, you know, wives, girlfriends, sisters, uh, daughters of strong men who created us to be the strong <laughs> women that we are and independent and everything right now, uh, that we also take that into account that, you know, just as much as we're putting all that pressure on ourselves, imagine what they're going through. Mm. I was also going to bring up, you mentioned making so many investments and that you still believe in investing in your business. It's just that you didn't have to do that the, to the level that you did. And I think that going on what Gloria said with social media, there's also the shiny objects and that you need to do all the things at all times. And there's all of these strategies. Do, do you do Instagram reels and invest in this class to learn how to do that? Do you do, you do the ads like you mentioned and invest in the ads? Like what, where do you put all your money into or these, you know, huge photo shoots? But and. Sometimes we have true. Like, it's true. She's <laughs> right. So oh, true. Like, so true. Like, We're all laughing when you said that. <laughs> Rent a ton of stuff for the photo shoot on top of it. Like that's yes. You know, <laughs> that's the pressure that is put in on you when you're a, a woman in business. But sometimes we just have to like try to filter all of that out and take a step back and figure out what has worked for us in the past and then double down on that one thing that's worked. For example, if you have successfully grown your business through referrals, not to say you don't make an Instagram reel here and there, but do you really need to invest that much to have a coach to teach you to do all of that if if referrals has been your number one source? Maybe you figure out other ways to um, utilize referrals, get more referrals, um, strengthen the referral connections that you already have. There's books on just referral networking. So if that's your thing, then double down on that. You don't have to do all the things. Don't submit to the pressure to do all the things. And that'll also help with reeling back some of the investments that you put in, but also go going back to what I said earlier, your time and your ability to rest. Absolutely. It's so funny because like you said, it's, it's like we're going full circle, right? We keep coming back to hiring help, taking care of yourself. And um, Jamila, who most of you know, who's on my team, she always tells me this, literally. She says, what do I tell you, lady? You cannot pour from an empty cup. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's true. And, I, you know, to go back to Delana's point about, um, you know, just about investing in yourself. Again, we all here, everyone here believes in investing in yourself, right? And I know that personally about everyone on this stage. And we all believe in investing in your business. But I think there is something to be said for just trusting yourself, right? When it comes to, because to your point, that whole shiny object syndrome, it will get you, to, we talk about it again, Pam and I were talking about that whole like scarcity thing, right? Hurry up, buy today, right? It's okay to breathe through it. Breathe through it. Don't buy today. Think about it, sleep on it. And if it's still there tomorrow, maybe it's the right opportunity for you. Right. What are some of the best investments that you've made in your business in the last year? I can say one. It hasn't come to fruition yet, but we're trying to get, we're working. I hired Delena to protect my IP. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's a, that's actually a really, uh, really important one. And something that, you know, I wrote her name down and I like messaged it to my assistant, Tamara, whom you've dealt with too. Um, because it is something that we, we are looking to, you know, uh, invest in and I'm actually switching brands completely. Whoa. Uh, so, you know, I've been going by G Marie and co for the past five years, but as we talk about building a legacy, uh, I am not going to live forever. It's just, it just is, you know, that's just the way the world works. So if I want a business and a brand and a legacy that's going to last, uh, past my lifetime, uh, then I needed to reconsider the name and the branding and just overall our whole company structure. Uh, so, you know, I, I won't release any information today because I need to speak to attorneys about protecting my intellectual property and trademarks mm -hmm. and other things. Uh, and we're working on some other, other, other items. But one of the biggest things that I did this past year is that I hired a CPA, an actual 
CPA, not just a tax prep person, not just a bookkeeper. Okay. We've always had those and, you know, we've always worked with professionals, uh, but from a subcontractor basis. Uh, so I actually hired a CPA that looks at our stuff on a regular basis, not a quarterly, not annually, but monthly, and literally combs through all of the financial details of our business. And the reason is, is because I have also learned, I think one of the biggest lessons that I learned in business, and this is not my first rodeo as it pertains to business. Uh, and I, I have learned that there are a lot of things that I am not good at and managing the finances and growing the business, uh, with the money that we have is not my strongest suit. And I've done a really, really good job at managing finances up until now. Uh, and I did a really good job at managing finances in previous businesses, but I could have done way better. And there are businesses that I failed at um, and or the business that I sold uh, where it could have been even bigger mm. had I doubled down and said, Hey, Gloria, you're not the right person to be managing the money and coming up with these financial strategies, right? Um, and that was ego. Uh, and I think that a lot of people have ego when it comes to money. And a lot of people are also ashamed, uh, particularly mm. women. So, you know, I, I say that that's the most important thing that I did and probably the best decision that I made uh, in 2021 and even just moving into 2022, uh, because even though we were leaps and bounds ahead of most construction companies using technology, using invoicing systems, using time management systems and all of these different things, um, it having a CPA is like a world of difference and we haven't 10 X our income yet, but we triple X did in a quarter. Um, and that was just because we got the right person. We have the right people now managing those funds. And you know what? It didn't even cost me that much more than some of the other systems. And all we did was reallocate funds from here and put them over here, you know, yeah. because I realized that, the clients that we deal with that do the best, uh, the clients who didn't fail during COVID, the clients who didn't call mm. me and say, hey, Gloria, can you come and demo the job site that you just built because we're going out of business? Uh, so those clients all had an entourage of people, not just lawyers, but people <laughs> uh, that take care of all of that stuff for them because they can't be bothered with it. Um, and it's not that I can't be bothered with it. I look at the numbers every day now. I never used to do that, mm. <laughs> you know? Uh, so I, I wanted to share that. It's a little bit embarrassing, I think, for women to even talk about money and to talk about money this way. And I know that we're live on Facebook and we're live on YouTube <laughs> and we're live on LinkedIn and whatever. <laughs> so yes, I'm here to tell you ladies <laughs> that, you know, even as a business owner, as a household owner, as, you know, a partner or whatever, you know, I myself have, have made mistakes and money mistakes and mistakes with all sorts of things. And I, I really wish I would have hired somebody to help me with money, um, help me manage money, um, you know, a, a lot sooner. So, you know, there is no shame in that. And you don't need to just look at your money when tax season comes around either. So, uh, mm. you know, those, those are my thoughts on what, one of the best decisions I made for my business was this past year. And Michelle, we took money from marketing, by the way, that was also not really turning into the X's that we thought or zeros we thought would happen. Um, and we just gave it to somebody else to manage the money better that we already had and are already bringing in the door. I love it. And you know what I receive from that, honestly, is that especially in my business, right, I am the visionary a lot of the time. So I'm the I'm marketing and the creative and let's get more eyes and um, ears and all that stuff. I can't handle the money because I want to spend it on the shiny objects, right? 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, oh, but the tools were on sale, guys. And no, no, no. Awesome. <laughs> Going from shoes to tools, but still, it's the same thing. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> Pam, what about you? Biggest success in the last year? You know, this one is interesting because I, it's kind of like a lesson with a success. So I ended up hiring a really expensive coach that promised a lot. <laughs> and, and what I received from this investment leveled me up, not in, not in turn of what she offered me, but me realizing that she could charge that much for the results that I didn't get. I was like, I'm changing people's lives. If she's doing this, charging this much, then I can absolutely increase my prices. I can absolutely ask for more money. They, I can absolutely request more and demand more because my work is, I mean, just with different exercises that I've done, I have testimonials of people that have said, you know, this, we removed something that was haunting me for years. Mm -hmm. And so it was an expensive, expensive lesson that actually supported me looking now, now that I'm over it. <laughs> now I'm like, you know what, this is what I learned. Yeah, I'm still not over last year's. <laughs> I mean, I still get like, uh, <laughs> hey guys, what I can tell you feel better. My last year was the same, by the way. <sighs> I made and I didn't even break even in 2020, Michelle. I made like less in 2021 from 2020. And 2020, we didn't do anything but breathe. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that honestly that's what it was for it's like 2021 you know yeah I feel like we failed because even though we made around the same we spent exponentially so much more money and it wasn't necessary because this is the worst part the things that made us money it wasn't the new stuff it was the stuff that we were doing before literally because you know I'm a numbers person so you go back and I look at all my data crunching all my numbers counting all my beans and literally referrals of influence, other agents, my community showing up here, giving value to the people for free. That's where all my business comes from. Of course, paid ads. I do believe in paid advertising, everyone. Let me say that. I believe in Facebook ads. Um, I always give this lecture. I do believe in Facebook ads. They take a lot longer to convert no matter what industry you're in. They're top, very top of the funnel. I believe more in Google ads. They're a little bit more intentional, but the reality is true organic old school marketing is where you get people that know you like you love you and will spend money faster okay sorry i'm off my off my my stage <laughs> all right ladies i appreciate you so much so much so much so i have one thing that i wanted to kind of leave everyone with so I also have this new thing, right? And I talk about like my board of directors, right? And I tell people like, I have my board of directors. And so my in personal board of directors are the people who I go to in my life and in my family anytime I need to make a decision, generally about business, more about money, right? And so for me, that includes my aunt, who most of you have seen or know or met in person or virtually, my husband, of course, right? Pam's a part of that circle, right? She's a pen in my phone. My cousin, um, Linnea, and my sister, and my best friend, Melissa, right? Those are the people generally, nine times out of 10, that anytime I have a big decision, I'm going to run to. Do you guys have, like, who are the people that you surround yourself with that help move you forward? That's a really good question. So I wanted to say two things. First, I just wanted to take a step back because when we were talking about referrals and investments, I wanted to say one of my best investments that I made was in BNI. And I wish mm -hmm. that I would have done that when I first started my business because it took some time to ramp up, but you start to build relationships with the people in your BNI group because you meet with them on a weekly basis and everyone has their own seats. So for those who are not familiar with BNI, it's a networking group and someone doesn't have your spot. So you hold the seat for whatever it is that you do. And then there's other people who hold the seat for whatever it is that they do. And then you intentionally try to network within the group. You don't have to network within the group, but you intentionally try and you are building really genuine relationships outside of just the professional. And so if I could have done anything differently, I would have gone back and done that immediately when I started my business, even though there is a financial investment 
in there, I feel like well, I've already made that back. So that was just one thing I wanted to say there. And, and that kind of propels off of the board of directors because I think that from BNI, I still have like my personal relationships with people who I knew before BNI, and those are people that I speak with with um, to, about my business, especially my best friend. I talk to her a lot before <laughs> I make any business decisions because she's known me the longest. But now having this new group of people who are kind of in it with me and they talk to me every day or every week, I should say, and hear about my business all the time, it's great to now have this extended network to um, talk to about some of the ideas that I come up with, not confidential and you know, giving all my intellectual. <laughs> property out but if it's something that i feel comfortable with sharing and and just having people around who i can talk to through certain ideas that that's something that i can do with with some of them yay thanks selena gloria pam bni is awesome too by the way yeah so mm -hmm. you know um for the board of directors, I actually, for the new business, I actually have a board of directors. Uh, so, you know, and I had to think about this, right? Uh, so I have my, like, what was my pseudo board of directors. And then now I have a board of directors that we're actually putting on paper. Uh, however, I've had the same assistant, uh, you know, this Michelle for 14 years now. Uh, she was my assistant when I was a real estate agent. I say a baby real estate agent in New York, uh, you know, showing rental apartments and walk-ups and she would help our clients with applications and whatever. Uh, and she's been with me on and off for the past 14 years. Uh, she is one of my best friends, uh, not just in business, but also in life. Uh, so Tamara, uh, I know she's watching on YouTube. So, you know, she is a hundred percent like number one person that I go to for absolutely everything. In fact, we've incorporated a piece of her in the new brand just because she is the only person outside of my dad who has completely believed in me, no matter how freaking crazy my ideas have been. And I have had some really wild ones. I mean, I've started my own fitness application before, you know, I had a fitness brand. I had a real estate investment brand. I had the whole agency thing. I've had food trucks. I mean, I've had some wild business ideas. I am totally an ADHD visionary. Um, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I now have the right people who like kind of help me focus on the one thing, right? Uh, but for most of my 20s, I was all over the place. And Tamara was there no matter what, whether I paid her or not. Mm -hmm. Like she was always there and she's always been there. So she's number one. There is my father whom is the voice of reason because I do believe that uh, men and women are built differently. And Pam spoke about this a little bit earlier, even in the whole cycle thing. But the way that we think, uh, men tend to think more logically about things where women tend to be a little bit more emotional. Uh, so, and, and that's just in my experience, of course, people can have different experiences and that's okay. Uh, but in my experience and in my biblical teachings, um, because I am a follower of Jesus Christ, uh, you know, that's how we are wired and think and everything differently. So, you know, my father has been the greatest supporter my whole life, but he's also been the best voice of reason. I remember when I started a company called Blowfish Brands and he was like, you don't have a marketing degree and you're in New York City. Like, do you think that it's a good idea to start an ad agency in New York City? <laughs> and I was like, I'm doing Foursquare ads and nobody even knows what Foursquare is. Like, I'm good, you know? And I was, I was, but I didn't think about it that way, right? And I did have hurdles I had to overcome even in that business, because I had no marketing degree. I had no ad agency background. I didn't work for Mad Men, you know, or any of that stuff. So yeah, I was just some little island girl who had some like crazy marketing ideas for real estate agents and developers. And I thought that this was the it, the juice. And Foursquare was for a hot minute <laughs> uh, until Facebook started doing the check-ins and whatever else, but we made a lot of people a lot of money with Foursquare ads, with Foursquare check-ins, Foursquare promos, and that was the it thing of that business, and I sold it. 
And it was our one previous business that was marginally successful. We sold it to a software development company um, and we moved on with our lives and did a bunch of other stuff that failed and then came back to construction <laughs> real estate. So um, I say all this to say that, you know, those are the two people who have always consistently been in my board of directors. Now, as I've evolved and grown and I'm trying to build a legacy, I've added additional people. So I do have a person on my board of directors who helped us with our new logo, who helped us with our new brand, who helped us with our new story. And she does come from a huge ad agency you know, in New York mm -hmm. and has all the experience and has worked with the big corporate brands and the pharmaceuticals and all of the things, right? And so she, and she knows the right people. Um, and so in order to get us to that next level, we needed that person on our team. Uh, so I'm very, very happy that we have that and proud that we have that. Uh, we also have Grace Mace and she's our software developer um, and also an architect and she's in California. And uh, Grace really is all things operations as it pertains to our projects, projects coordination and technology. You know, the construction industry doesn't use technology too much. Um, so those are the people that are, you know, key to me and who are really, really important to me and in my board of directors, whether they're officially on a board on paper or not. Um, but uh, I, it is important to have those people to support you. I definitely agree, Michelle. Yay! Love that. I, I mean, hands down your dad and um she's your um assistant who's no longer an assistant right she's like ops she's a business partner she will yeah. be in april yeah. anyway <laughs> she's gonna own a piece of the business um and yeah. that's it that's like she moved on in life we call her the chief of chief of happy instead of head of operations we stole that from gary v because <laughs> if she doesn't do all the stuff she does in the background nobody's going to be happy with gloria on the front end Yay! <laughs> and Pam, what about you? We're gonna Pam, what about you? Who's your who's your board of directors? So for me, so I have a couple of people. David, my partner, is one. He's always like bringing the very practical piece of of the thought process and the very grounded perspective of it's almost like he always brings me back to the reality and this 3D world. And when I'm like 5D and all, all the time. And uh, so the, he's, he's the grounding piece. Um, I have friends, Michelle, um, my other friend, Janika, and my best friend, Megan. Like they are for sure on the, on the quick, quick call list for, <laughs> for all of the things. And I have Uncle Mark, who is a... I don't know how old is he, but he's an older white man. And I love having conversations with him because they think different. And like from all of the perspectives, like walking into rooms is different for him. And I've actually told them, like, I walk into a room and I have to scan if this is safe for me. You walk into a room and you and you're automatically safe, you know, and so just really exploring those perspectives is something that I seek for when I make decisions. Yay. I mean, there's never enough time, honestly, to hang out with you guys. Every time we do these, I feel like it stops so abruptly, but that's why we have them every month, right? That's why we come back once a month and have a different spotlight. I don't know what we're doing next month that, you know, Jamila will tell me again, Jamila is, you know, another person who I think I didn't even say on the board of directors, but she's the person who makes this place run. She's the same Gloria. She's been with me through two, three businesses. She's been around forever. She's not going anywhere. That's what she's told me. So Jamila, shout out. I love you, sis. Um, no, but I Jamila! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Ladies, as we wrap up for today, and of course, for those that are watching this later, um, I want to let them know, like, if they need to find you, what should they be looking for and how do they find you? Anyone can take it. Well, if you want to find me, I'm easy to find. Um, Barbie, so not like the doll, B-A-R-B-E-E, -E, <laughs> lawonline.com. That's my website. So it's barbielawonline.com. And if you go there, all of my contact information is there, including um, social media handles. Awesome. Gloria? Yeah, so I have a digital business card and I make it super easy. Uh, it is G Marie, so 
first name of my name and then my middle name, Marie, G Marie. 10k.com and folks can get access to my website on there as well as the website to our online community that we have built uh, all of my social media channels linkedin obviously my preferred method of communication and connecting with professionals uh and even phone numbers so thank you so 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 much michelle for hosting and for jamila for organizing uh and you know for having me as a guest today you know, I feel truly honored just to be in the presence of incredible women and also just to be a part of, um, you know, your spotlight today. So I wanted to say thank you. I wanted to give you your flowers. I was truly humbled, uh, you know, by, by the invite. And I've had such a fun time. Uh, Delania, we are totally reaching out to you, Barbie. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm so excited to catch the replay and also just to connect with these ladies a little bit more. Um, and Pam, uh, I was a part of that tapping exercise that you did with the bridge um, the last time that they had one of these. So I know that that replay is somewhere out in the ether. Um, so folks, uh, if you want to know a little bit more about what Pam does and how incredible she is, because that was so powerful, even on video, uh, I encourage you to catch that replay. So I'll pass the mic back over to you, Michelle. Thank you so much. Again. Yeah, I forgot. That's right. Gloria was there. Um, Pam, can we post that? Can we cut it up and post it all over the place? Yeah. If you want to. Yes. But is that going to take from the next one that we're going to do? I know. Who knows? Who knows? And so before Pam tells you guys where to find her, I do want to give, this is like the perfect segue, right? So, you know, Gloria said earlier, she that, you know, she gives honor to God. She is, you know, a Christian. Pam knows this about me too, right? So Pam um, does this tapping thing, right? And so me, I am a Bible something, you know, all with me everywhere I go. Christian, right? And so one day I was having a hard day and Pam was like, do you want to tap? And I was like... <laughs> And you're okay, like, you no, to... <laughs> we're not supposed to do that, like, right? Right? Pam, right? And so I was like, sure, right? So because I love Pam. So we start tapping, right? We're doing this exercise. And I mean, literally, it's so grounding. It's like yoga. It's like meditation, right? And so my husband, like, opens the door. I'm like, hold on. Just, just go. Just go, right? I'm tapping right now. <laughs> so, guys, it is the most amazing experience so we will cut up the video we'll post it just a snippet so you can see but it literally was the it, i was my I know, I know what she's capable of and i was mind blown from the experience so pam we love you thank you <laughs> thank how you do so the people much. find you yeah thank you thanks for for this space this has been great and meeting all of you that's been awesome i'm gafacompam.com it's very simple that's my podcast and you can also hear me anywhere you listen to podcasts <laughs> and so super simple i it's on my name kavakambam.com and you can find all of the things that i do including tapping yay and she's an artist y'all awesome everyone thank you for hanging out with us this friday we know it's sunny in some places so go enjoy the day and we'll catch you next time bye <laughs> bye Yay! Thank you, ladies, so much. <laughs> oh, that was so good. You're such a good host.